Welcome to the pre-flight training video of the Sling NGT. The Sling Next Generation Trainer is the airplane we use in our flight school at Sling Pilot Academy. It's a modern aircraft with glass cockpit avionics and a beautiful FADEC controlled engine. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to do a pre-flight check. It's important to understand that a pre-flight check is a part of the flight. It's required uh, by FAA regulation and by common sense uh, for any flight. So the pre-flight check should be approached with the same focus and diligence as you would approach any other phase of flight. Before starting any pre-flight check, it's important to first do a pre-flight check of yourself. There are acronyms out there like I am safe, but basically any pilot about to uh, engage in a pre-flight check and therefore about to engage in flight should first have a, a self-assessment. Are you feeling well rested? Is your mind clear of any uh, distractions? Are you preoccupied with something work or family related? This is a time for you to put all of that stuff aside and then proceed to the pre-flight check. The pre-flight check, like many phases of flight, is accompanied by a checklist. Not all checklists are created equal. Some checklists, you do actions one at a time and check them off a list. The checklist that we use during a pre-flight check is different. It's a, it's a verify list. We follow a flow as we get through each sub-assembly of the aircraft we verify it with the checklist. If we forgot anything, we go back and check it. And then we move to the next part of the airplane. If you're going around the airplane and picking out items on a list one at a time, checking them on the airplane, it's distracting, it ruins your flow, and it might make you miss a bigger picture if you fixate it on, on each little item on the checklist. The checklist that we're using now is based on the checklist in the POH of the airplane. Uh, POHs and checklists change over time. Uh, but the important thing is to remember that you use the checklist that is in, in service and you uh, follow it methodically. As you approach the airplane for the first time or at some point in the pre-flight, it's really important to take a step back from the airplane and look at it from 30 to 40 feet away, dead on from the front or the rear. The purpose of this is to make sure that the airplane doesn't have any major uh, issues. For example, a cracked landing gear that would make it lift over to one side. Something like that you may not notice while you uh, looking at each individual item, but stepping back and taking it in as one aircraft is really important to do. And when you're approaching the airplane from a distance, that's a great time to take a good look at it and take it all in. Uh, the first thing we're going to do in the pre-flight is uh, we're going to check the cockpit. So into the cockpit we go. When it comes to ingressing and egressing uh, the sling, it's really important that uh, only one person gets on the rear step at a time. If two people get on the steps at the same time, like the pilot and a passenger, uh, it can tip the airplane on its tail. To get into the sling, you place one of your feet on the step, you hold onto the handle, and put your weight uh, at an intersection of ribs and spars on the wing, and step right up. Once you're up on the wing, you can lean into the cockpit to check the cockpit items on the pre-flight checklist. So once we're uh, kneeling into the cockpit, make sure your feet are not outside of the uh, grip tape area on the wing. At this point, we can start doing the cockpit pre-flight check items. So we've got our lanes off, which are our ignitions. We turn on the master and the EFIS and the EFIS backup switches, and we fully extend the flaps. At this point, we're looking at the EFIS to do a fuel check. This is the first indication of how much fuel we have on board. Here we have seven gallons on the left side and 10 on the right. We'll verify this later, but this is our first indication. We're gonna do our initial check of the controls here, full left and right movement of the stick. Uh, forward and aft, full and free movement. And at this point, it's a good idea to clean the canopy and check that the fire extinguisher is on board. It's normally by the pilot's right leg. And then, of course, to check your documentation. We have our airworthiness certificate displayed, and behind that, we have our registration. So that is all in order. Cockpit checks complete. We're going to turn off the master and EFASES at this point so that we don't run down the battery. And we're going to carefully step backwards off the wing. It's important also to note that we don't hang on the canopy. Uh, the canopy uh, moves around quite freely. So whenever we step onto the wing, we've always got our hand on the handle, our foot on the step, and we're putting a bit of weight on the wing right where the spar and the rib intersect. When exiting the cockpit, you'll need to take the keys. These will be used for checking the fuel caps, and you'll need the fuel strainer. This is gonna be used for checking the fuel a little later. So put them in one of your pockets and then continue with the pre-flight check. And as I said previously, we're going to use our flow to move around the aircraft and we're going to verify it with the checklist when we're done. 
So let's start at the rear of the wing here. This is a good opportunity to look down at the rear landing gear. Um, we can see the brakes, the tire is inflated. There's no leaking of brake fluid on these brakes and there's no other indication of any other brake or tire problem. And so at this point, we move up to the flap. We check the flap for movement. Flaps have a little bit of movement, but uh, that's just the right amount. We've got some torque seal on the, on the bolt here that's holding the flap. We move along the flap here. While we move along, we're looking at the top surface of the wing and the flap for any kind of damage. We get to the aileron here. We check free movement of the aileron. And then uh, we feel for movement of the aileron push rod and check for torque seal. It's really important at this point that you hold the aileron down if you stick your finger in this hole because a gust of wind or someone grabbing on the other aileron could uh, chop your finger off there. As we move around the wing, check for any damage to the wingtip, check for condition of the lights. If we were doing a night flight, we would check the navigation lights powered on. This is a good time uh, to squat down and to take a look at the tire and the pitot tube and everything that you can see from underneath the wing over here. The shape of the tire as looked at from the side is a very good indication of inflation. And I can see that all three of these tires look properly inflated. Then as we work our way around the front side of the wing, we've got the light lens over here. Look for any damage, any signs of an issue. And then we move to the pitot tube. On the pitot tube, we're looking for any signs of blockages. Um, I don't see anything. There's also a little angle of attack port in the bottom here. Look for any blockages there. And then moving up to the bottom of the wing, we have the fuel vent over here. So this is the vent that allows air into the fuel tank to replace the fuel volume that is consumed by the engine. So any blockage of this can cause a low pressure in the fuel tank and can cause fuel starvation if it gets really bad. Moving closer to the wheels and tires here, we can see uh, torque strip on all of the nuts and uh, don't see any signs of damage over here. The next check we're gonna do is check the fuel contents. The gauges can always uh, give us an indication of how much fuel we have on board, but physically checking the fuel is the only way you can definitively know how much fuel you have. On these 19.8 gallon tanks, if you can see a little bit of fuel on the bottom, you have at least 10 gallons of fuel on board. Now that we've checked the fuel level uh, on this wing, we're gonna drain some fuel from the fuel drain point. This is the lowest point of fuel on the wing. Uh, the purpose of this is to check the quality of the fuel, to check for contamination, and especially to check for water contamination. Water settles at the bottom of a tank, so it's important to have a real good check of the quality of the fuel. Now that we've taken a full sample of fuel, we're looking for sediment, we're looking for debris, and uh, most importantly, we're looking to see if there's any water in the bottom of our fuel. Just to be sure that this isn't entirely full of water, I'm gonna smell it, and it smells very strongly of fuel. Uh, since we use car gas most of the time in these airplanes, it doesn't have the blue color that Avgas has. So it can be tricky to tell if it's fuel or water, but this is most definitely fuel. And so now we'll either uh, return this fuel to the tank or discard it, check your local regulations. So now that we've checked the left wing with our flow, I'm gonna use the checklist to verify that I haven't forgotten anything. All good. So now that we've completed the wing, we're gonna move on to the cowling and we're gonna check it with our flow and use the checklist to verify later. Here we go. So starting on the left side of the cowling here, the first thing we're gonna check is our left engine compartment door. So we use these quarter turn fasteners. If you need to press the, the cowling down a little bit to loosen the door, you can do that. And we open the door and take a look inside. Inside here, we're gonna inspect all visible parts of the engine. We're looking at the oil lines. We're looking at uh, the engine to see any signs of oil leaks. We're checking to see if the exhaust looks like it's in place, that none of the exhaust springs are cracked. And generally just taking a good look around to see if the engine looks clean and healthy. Once we've done that, we're gonna close this door, make sure it's seated nicely, and uh, turn our quarter turn fasteners to the right. So stepping to the front of the airplane here, we've got the propeller. We check that the propeller has no nicks or cracks in it, that it looks to be in good condition. A small amount of uh, etching away of the gel coat by rain and dust is normal, but making sure that there are no major cracks or dents is important. Looking at the nose cone, we make sure all of the fasteners are secure and none are missing. And then kneeling down, 
We have the air intakes, the nostrils of the airplane visible. We make sure that there are no obstructions in the nostrils. Uh, next down here is the oil cooler. Here we want to make sure that there's no leaks or any damage to the oil cooler. And moving a little further down, we have the water radiator and also checking that there's no obstructions um, or any sign of damage or leaking in the oil cooler. Coming down the nose gear, we're looking for the condition of the nose gear. We can see the, the nose wheel and the nose wheel tire and both look to be in good condition. At this point, grabbing on the root of the propeller, you can pull the nose down and check that the suspension is moving freely and this appears to be moving freely. The next thing we're going to look at is the right side engine compartment door and this is where a lot of the action happens. On this side of the engine, there are a lot of critical items to inspect. The first things we see are the brake fluid reservoir. Uh, seeing any amount of brake fluid in this reservoir is sufficient and it looks good there. Uh, just to the right of that is the coolant overflow bottle. There's a minimum line right here near the bottom and that's all the coolant that you need. The primary coolant reservoir is actually right on top of the engine at a lower level than this overflow bottle and that is always full. So as long as there's uh, coolant to the bottom line here, that's the correct amount. Looking down here into the engine compartment, you can see oil lines, you can check for leaks. We've got some coolant lines. We have the uh, air intake here. And that brings us to the oil reservoir. If there's any problem with oil delivery or oil flow or oil quantity, the engine uh, can and will stop. So checking the oil is, is a very important part of the pre-flight. This flat portion of the oil dipstick is the allowable range of oil level. Right now, it looks like we were just at the bottom of it, almost too low. But what happens with this dry sump engine is that the oil is all in the engine crankcase at this point, not in the oil reservoir. And so what we need to do is burp the engine so we can have a true indication of how much oil we have in the system. So we'll replace this dipstick into the oil reservoir right now. At this point, we're gonna burp the engine and we do this by slowly and steadily rotating the propeller in the clockwise direction. We never rotate it backwards because that can damage the engine. So we rotate it in the same direction that it, that it turns in flight. And we're trying to slowly pump the oil through the engine and into the reservoir so we can check the level. You don't want to try to grab the prop too close to the root. It'll uh, require too great of a force to rotate it. Holding the prop about two thirds out uh, from the root will give you good leverage and will make it easier to rotate it. And that's the sound that you want to hear. It can be useful to stand next to the engine door and rotate the prop from behind like this so you can hear it better. So now let's check the oil level again. We pull the dipstick out again and now our oil level is indicating close to the top of the flat area. So if we had checked it the first time without burping it, we might have been tempted to add some oil but now we see that we've actually got more than enough oil and we're good to go. So we replaced the dipstick and the oil cap, which I had placed on the top of the engine cowl to make sure that I didn't forget it, is retrieved and placed back on the oil tank. And we've now finished checking the engine in this side of the compartment. We now close the engine compartment door, quarter turn for fasteners, and we move down to the gasculator. Under the engine here is the lowest point in the fuel system um, near the engine. So we press the fuel tester on it and take a sample. It looks like it contains no debris. I don't see any water in it. It does smell like fuel. So now we will return this fuel to the tank or discard as applicable, sorry. So that brings us to the end of the engine portion of this pre-flight flow. So now it's time to verify with the checklist. Checklist verifies, we didn't forget anything. So done with the cowling, let's move on to the right wing. So now the right wing is the same as the left wing, except it doesn't have a pitot tube. So we're gonna do it exactly the same as we did the left wing. Um, because we're moving clockwise around the airplane, we're gonna start at the front of the wing and, uh, and move towards the, the rear of the wing. And when we're done with that, we're gonna move on to the rear fuselage and the empennage. We're gonna verify our flow with the checklist. The checklist verified, we completed the right wing pre-flight check correctly. So let's move on to the rear fuselage and the empennage. At this point, we're gonna look at the condition of the rear fuselage. 
Uh, we've got our COM antenna up here. It looks to be in good shape. We've got our ELT antenna over here. And this is a good time to kneel down and take a look at your transponder antenna, which is a blade style antenna at the bottom of the airplane. Check the damage there. And it looks to be in good shape. And depending on the version of airplane, the static port will either be on the sides here um, or, or up near the front. So we'll check the static ports. Then we move around to the rear of the aircraft. We check the condition of the uh, horizontal tail. Uh, we take a look at the elevator. This is another opportunity to check free movement of the elevator. And as we walk across, we're going to check that all of the nuts are on the hinge bolts and that they have a, a visible amount of torque stripe on them. And these ones do. This is a good time to kneel down and check uh, the bottom surface of the elevator. And while you're down here, uh, it's a good opportunity to take a look at the rudder cables. We want to feel to see if there are any uh, frayed strands. We want to make sure that the nut uh, is secure that's holding the rudder cable on. And then looking in this hole in the rear fuselage, you can see the nut that's on the elevator push rod, and that's an important inspection to make. And so now we drop the rudder. Um, the rudder hinge bolt nuts are inspectable from the side here. So we take a look at those. And remember, the rudder is connected to the nose wheel, so it's not going to move freely, so it's not worth trying to check its movement uh, in this position. And then at the top there, we have our nav antenna, and that looks to be secured too. Uh, this airplane has a fixed uh, rudder trim tab on it, so make sure that that's secure. Uh, we can see the inspection points in the, in the rudder from this side too. And looking at the top of this elevator, we can see the trim tab crouching down. We can see the trim tab push rod and the little cotter pin that's in here. And that looks to be secure. And we can see the left side rudder cable and make sure there's no frays. This is a great opportunity to take a look at the uh, tail tie down hook. Any airplane that has had a tail strike uh, may show some damage here. So this is a good opportunity to make sure that didn't happen on the previous flight. Looking at the top of this elevator, we can see that the nuts on the hinge bolts are secure. And then moving around to the front of this horizontal stabilizer, we can see that the condition is good um, and there's no damage. And all of the screws on the uh, tail fairing are secure. From the rear empennage uh, through the rear fuselage, we check for condition of the surface skins, check condition of the step. And that brings us to the end of the fuselage portion of the pre-flight. So let's pull out our checklist and make sure we didn't forget anything. The checklist verifies we have completed the fuselage portion of the checklist. So this pre-flight check is complete and we are ready to ingress the airplane. So in summary, a good pre-flight will check all items around the airplane and it'll put you in the right mindset to have a safe flight. So slow down and enjoy those pre-flight checks. And as usual, like and subscribe and any suggestions Put them in the comments below.